uh, Dejan Anastasievich, uh, I work for a Serbian news agency, Tanjuk. Yeah. And um, uh, predictably, I would like to ask you uh, to elaborate a bit on Kosovo, namely, um, um, uh, also, I think today some reinforcements uh, came to K4 into Kosovo. Can you tell me how much of these troops are there? And m more importantly, you said you wanted to um, prevent any spillover from Serbia. Can you, can you explain what you mean yes. by that? As we know, uh, the elections uh, are going to take place in Serbia here on the 6th of May. And congratulations, by the way, to Serbia on that issue. Uh, we also know that, uh, that this can lead to tensions in part of Kosovo and that K4 uh, is responsible for a safe and secure environment in Kosovo in, as a third responder uh, behind the Kosovo police force and the uh, ULEX uh, and uh, to make sure that all assets are available should tension rise. We have uh, Supreme Allied Commander Europe has decided uh, to deploy a second uh, Battalion, as you know, there is one battalion of the reserve which is in place, and a second battalion uh, is expected to arrive here by the beginning of uh, May, and thus making sure that Commander K4, should problems arise, uh, will have the necessary assets to keep uh, Kosovo uh, a safe and secure environment. And hopefully we will not have any episodes, I should say. <laughs> Uh, Laurent Thomas with Agence France Press. French President uh, François Hollande, uh, French presidential candidate François Hollande, <laughs> that's me, um, uh, has repeated that uh, if he were elected May 6, which is looking likely, he would uh, uh, withdraw French combat troops this year, one year earlier than Sarkozy has said. Would this pose a problem for the transition? First of all, I have to say that it's not for me to comment on who is going to be elected president of France in the upcoming elections. Uh, secondly, um, decisions as to operations conducted within the NATO framework are always the result of a consultation between the Allies, and the Allies agree to what they want to do together. Uh, and in what you mentioned here will, I assume, lead to a consultation between a possible uh, French president, in this case, President, president Hollande, or then what would be President Hollande and his allies in NATO. But is there any contingency planning in case France decides to pull, pull out by this year, which, which is much different from what has been planned so far? Well, until now, we do not know anything about French intentions to pull out this year, apart from what President candidate François Hollande has declared to the press. And uh, it is not possible to base such decisions upon declarations. We need to have the French, official French government to uh, come forward with what they believe is the decision to be taken in due time. And then, of course, we will do the necessary planning accordingly. Any other questions? Sir? Yes, Slobo Lakitz from the Associated Press. Um, uh, my colleague in uh, Washington uh, did an analysis uh, on the weekend of, uh, of uh, the government accounting offices report on missile defense and an internal Pentagon report on, internal, on uh, uh, missile defense, and um, found that their conclusions are essentially that they're over cost, uh, very much delayed, and technically not really feasible because of various reasons concerning the, the radars and their abilities and the interceptors and their abilities. Um, how does that square with your intent to introduce, um, to, to actually declare an interim capability at Chicago? Well, I have, first of all, I have to say that I've heard about this report, but I have not read it personally. Uh, and therefore, I do not know the details of it. Uh, what I do know is that uh, the U.S. government uh, has stated quite clearly that it is its intention uh, in, um, in, in um, consultation with the Allies to declare the interim operational capability and therefore taking the first step of a development of a ballistic missile defense capability, uh, primarily in Europe, uh, which was stretched over quite a substantial number of years. Uh, and that's about what I can say uh, until further notice.
Uh, can you give us some details uh, on Kosovo? Uh, how, how many how many troops uh, do you have there now, and how many troops are arriving um, in the second battalion, and and when will they be there? As to the exact number of troops we have now, as far as I remember, it's six thousand five hundred. But there I will ask uh, to get a, to, to provide you with a confirmation, because there might be some hundreds of the right uh, the right number. Uh, secondly, uh, it is a battalion, the um, German-Austrian battalion, which has been activated and which is going to deploy within those very days, uh, with being and ready for operations in the beginning of May. And the size is about roughly 700 and 750 men. I should say 750 soldiers or 750 men and women. I will get back to you. What yeah, the we'll just check the numbers to make sure that you have the exact numbers. Right. So well, thank you very much for coming.